I, I want to talk specifically. We'll move into your – the first stint at South Carolina, 89 and 98. And, obviously, just off the top of my head, I mean, you coach some great players in that stint. Corey Robinson, who I, I've had on the show. John Abraham, who I've had on the show. You're talking about Corey Miller. Or Corey Miller. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Corey Miller. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, coach some great players in that tenure. You were under, you know, talked about Sparky Woods, under Brad Scott. I mean, we just – you know, I'll let you expand on it as much as you want, but you're, you're – I have to imagine, you know, it had to be so interesting, your first stint at Carolina versus your second stint. I mean, things change, obviously, but just how much they had changed. But that first stint specifically, just talk about that because, again, App was your first coaching job, but your first SEC job. And you were part of, you know, the team that they transitioned from independent right. to SEC. Just, you know, again, expand as much as you want just about your time at Carolina. You were there a long time. And, obviously, I know under Coach Scott it didn't necessarily end the way you wanted, but – Obviously, we don't have a ton of success and come back. But just, just talk about a little bit about that first stand at Carolina. For the first time, I, of course, you know, I was very excited to, to be at South Carolina and and because uh, it was the, the first major university that I coached at. Mm -hmm. And you, you came in – sorry, now I cut you off. You came in immediately after Coach Morrison's right. passing, right? Yeah, right. Off, just crazy. In fact, and I remember, you know, Sparky's very first uh, staff meeting because there was like a seven or eight – day period in between when he got the job mm -hmm. and when uh i ended up coming and, and really most of us ended up you know getting hired there and he had been around the team enough and and, and that things were you know coach morrison had the way he did things and you know what a great coach he was here mm -hmm. you know for the gamecocks but things were kind of loose mm -hmm. and they all lived up there in, that, in the roost <laughs> and it was different and uh as soon as we got there Sparky said, I want all the coaches to go through the dorm tonight and try to get to know some of the kids. Well, there was all kind of f funny smelling stuff. <laughs> there was there was bottles everywhere. I mean, just kidding, and guys, and, and you, you walk in a kid's room, hey, coach, how you doing, you know? <laughs> and so after being up there for about an hour and a half, we had a staff meeting that night at midnight. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget this, and it proved to be true, but Sparky, he told us some staff, he said, guys, he said, y'all seen kind of what we're staring down right now. And he said, I really wish I were the next head coach here. <laughs> y'all knew y'all had to do the dirty work, basically. Yeah, that's what we got yeah. hired for. Yeah. And we did. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there was a lot of, that's the way it was. Yeah. And, we, and we had some good, you know, good older talent. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean Todd Ellis, Corey Miller, mm -hmm. uh, Ike Harris. I mean, I mean, there were, there was some good older talent, mm -hmm. and but the younger kids, a lot of the younger ones just weren't. It wasn't there. In fact, when, when we joined the SEC, a lot of people were really, oh, this is great, you know, all this, and, and, and it was. It turned out to be a great thing for South Carolina, but it just took a lot of time. Right. But we were sitting there in the meeting, went, man, we we don't have SEC caliber players <laughs> across the board. Right. Right. You know, our, our older guys, I thought, were. You know, they, I mean, they were that caliber, but not the, all the way across the board. Right. And so we went through the growing pains and recruiting. And we had some good classes, saw some good kids, mm. you know, and then watched them later on when the thing, first bowl game in South Carolina history. <laughs> and I, I was on that staff when we beat mm -hmm. West Virginia. But it, that was, you know, it was a different time. Mm. And I know we're playing Tennessee this week. I was mm. talking to, I got a friend of mine earlier today, you know, Tennessee was always on uh, Halloween weekend. Yeah, yeah. Always. And it's so unusual to see Tennessee in September now. <laughs> yeah. And well, crazy year. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, yeah it was, it's so different. And, but it just, you know, we, we didn't have the athletes that all, all right. these people did, but we got, we got them. We, mm -hmm. we worked at it and worked at it. And Coach Scott came in and, mm -hmm. and, uh, we kept working at it and, and things just, we never got the, the corner turned, you know, with him and he's Brad, you know, I think Brad's a good football coach. And, but it was just, but that was his first head coaching job. Mm -hmm. You know, his first head jobs are different now. Yeah. And I was fortunate, you know, I got a chance to, I wanted to stay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had opportunities to go other places, but I wanted to stay here. Mm -hmm. And I, this would become my adopted home. My mm -hmm. kids grew up here. My wife was uh, a teacher here, and so uh, a lot of our friends, when we came back the second time, you know, a lot of our friends that, that we had been around while we were here, you know, they were still here. Mm -hmm. And some of my best friends right now uh, live out in Lexington, and uh, 
different parts of the state. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my adopted home. I'm from North Carolina, but this is, this is home. Mm -hmm. For sure. So you, you talked about Coach Holtz. I know we, we talked a little bit before uh, off air, and you said you wanted to stay. Just just talk, what were the initial conversations? Because obviously you were very familiar with Coach Holtz, his successes at Notre Dame and everything right. else. But what, what were those conversations <laughs> like with Coach Holtz about the potential? I mean, again, it worked out because I, I do want to talk to you about going to Michigan State and Coach yeah. Saban and everything. But You know, and the thing about Coach Holtz, and again, you know, he's a legend. Yeah. He's a coach and, Hall of, yeah, Hall of Famer, absolutely. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to stay was to learn from him. Yeah. And – I had a good conversation with him and, you know, he asked a lot of questions and I did too. Mm -hmm. And I just realized you know, it wasn't going to be something that was going to work, but he was very fair to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and he got things turned around here, which mm -hmm. my hat's off to him and mm -hmm. beat Ohio state. And that outback ball, I think that's the yeah. I'm right now. <laughs> yep. And uh, I didn't earn this hat. I got this. I got, the, I got this. From Chris, but, <laughs> I didn't earn it either. So. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know that, but it was a good conversation, and you know, it, it's he had you know ideas of what he wanted his program, you know, direction want to go, and that's the head coach's prerogative, and so be it. Yeah. And uh, I, I also had a chance to go to Michigan State yeah. with Coach Saban, and I wanted to enhance my football knowledge mm. on defense. I kind of pigeonholed myself into being a defensive guy, which is fine. It's what I wanted to do, and I just, everybody I talked to, he was the best in the country. Mm -hmm. at, yeah. You know, with well, defense. Hey, long run, that seemed, that turned to be true. <laughs> right. For so sure. I, so I went to work, you know, for Coach Saban. And I, and I was his recruiting coordinator, too, mm -hmm. up there in Michigan. I brought kind of how we did things down here mm -hmm. uh, with me. And uh, he liked that, the SEC a, a approach mm -hmm. to recruiting. And uh, so – you know, I ended up staying up there when, when he left. I could have gone to LSU with him, mm. and I didn't. Don't regret that. It was a family decision. Mm. And uh, so uh, then I left there and went to North Carolina, and my dad had gotten sick, and mm. so I needed to get back home. Right. And so I took a job at University of North Carolina and, mm. and worked for John Bunning there. In fact, I just talked to him last week. You know, what, what a unique person. Mm. I've never seen a man love his university more than John Bunning did. He would – he would not take a raise mm -hmm. and have that money doled out to the assistant coaches every year. He never took a raise because mm -hmm. he loved awesome. he loved his university. I, I mean, I, you don't see that anymore. <laughs> no. You know, and, and what a unique man. And he had been uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. He's a linebacker for 11 or 12 years. Mm -hmm. In fact, he told me a story when they made it to the Super Bowl. Coach Vermeil was the head coach. And mm -hmm. He said, we lost the game. And he said, I'm sitting in a chair in the, in the shower. I said, I'm naked. Then the shower's coming down. I said, I'm sitting there crying because mm -hmm. we lost. And a dang rookie came up to him. He said, said uh, Mr. Bunning, said, don't worry about it. So we'll be, we'll be back here next year. He said, I just looked up at him. And I said, man, you have no idea how hard it is to get here. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I've spent 10, 11 years trying to get here. He said, you have no idea. But Coach Bunny, I, I really enjoyed working right. with him. And then when I got the chance to come back to Cyclone, Coach Spurrier, mm -hmm. you know, I did. 